In this video essay, I am aiming to explore the work of French filmmaker Céline Sciamma, examining her body of work and what makes her unique in terms of style, character, casting, costume and other elements. The day I made the film, uh, thinking about the impact. Um, Siama is a filmmaker known for the exquisite tone of her films. My two personal favourites, Portrait of a Lady on Fire and Petite Maman, exhibit wildly different tones, told through mise-en-scene, period and character. However, they are both distinctly silly and Siama. I believe that this mark of hers is actually traceable to the tenderness that can be found within her films, as it feels that with every film that she makes, she injects so much of her own gentleness making each character feel whole and empathetic. Siamra is particularly focused on utilising style and costume to create tone. With Portrait, Siamra's costume designer, Dorothée Guirot, a close collaborator of hers, can be quoted saying that We decided to treat the costumes in a refined and pure way, to have a clear reading of each character. This attention to detail is something so intrinsic to Siamra's work. For example, with Water Lilies, when she spent a month with the cast prior to filming, developing characters and crafting the authenticity that has come to define her work. However, although Siama often presents a certain gentleness and softness that can scarcely be found in other films, this is not to imply that she portrays it as a weakness. Siama manages a balancing act between the aforementioned tenderness and a sense of righteous ferocity, with a very emotive focus in her films often driven by a hearty drive as the goal of her protagonist dominates their worldview, propelling them forward against all odds. Through the harsh realities of teen girlhood in Siama's debut, Water Lilies, or the inherent loneliness found in female pre-adolescence within Petite Maman, Siama thrusts her characters into lonely, fearful places, and often the power of her films can be found through their resolution, as they fight against their circumstances, successfully or otherwise. Siama also constructs a sense of genuineness that can be accredited largely to her casting. She is renowned for implementing amateur or non-professional actors in her films. For example with Adele Hanel, an actress that appears in multiple works, as a teenage girl in Water Lilies and a young woman in Portrait. As Hanel took on her role in Water Lilies, she was by no means a professional actor, only having acted once before at the age of 12. However, through this casting, Siama managed to create a sense of relatability and realness that may be difficult to source with a large portion of professional actors. Many of her films utilise heavy aestheticism alongside themes of social realism. This combination makes for a sort of relatable mysticism that's often displayed through costumes and visual style. For example, in Portrait of a Lady on Fire, wherein she utilises period costumes to guide the theme of female sexuality, as physical intimacy is often told through deviations in modesty, as the women shift from donning full period dress to merely underdresses or slips, a visual signal of their intimate, blossoming relationship. Siamo cites filmmaker David Lynch as an influence of hers, something visible visually through Petite Maman's dreamy portrayal of forest environments, or through the almost mythical storytelling found in Portrait. She once told Empire about her experience watching Lynch's Twin Peaks Firewalk with me, saying that it was the first film of his that I had seen, and I watched it at a cinema in the Latin Quarter in Paris. Siama recalls, I hadn't seen Twin Peaks ever before, so I didn't know what was going on. I was totally lost, but also into it like crazy. When I got out, the whole world felt different. This final quote is something that could be applied to a lot of Siama's own work as her snapshots of the lives of her characters captivate audiences, making for a wholly transformative experience. Siamu is also well known for her portrayal of lesbianism and sapphic relationships. The most famous example of this is through Portrait, a love story between two 18th century women living on a distant island in Brittany together. She utilises an Orphic narrative, as the women find themselves absorbed first in a mutual artistic passion that blossoms into an erotic desire, with heavy inference through visual cues filling in the gaps that are left blank by historical modesty. Often, these sapphic themes are complemented by allusions to the female gaze, 
a theory that emerged as a response to feminist film theorist Laura Mulvey's concept of the male gaze. I suddenly found I'd become a woman spectator who watched the film f from a distance and critically rather than with those um, absorbed eyes. The male gaze represents the gaze of a heterosexual man characterised by gross female objectification and a world dominated by male perspectives. Chantal Ackerman, who Siama cites as one of her greatest influences, is arguably an original pioneer of female gaze filmmaking. As her female protagonists lead lives with women at the forefront of the narrative, both behind and in front of the camera, to not just provide sexual stimulation, but to present narratives of the female experience often neglected in contemporary filmmaking. The most outward example of this is in Ackerman's three and a half hour epic, fully titled, Jean Dillemin, 23 Commerce qui, 1080 Bruxelles. This film follows the titular protagonist as she goes about her dreary domestic life, forced into the position of housewife and mother, despite her desire for more. Some consider this film grueling, as the majority of its runtime is consumed by this domesticity, as Jeanne grows more and more weary of domestic life. Her only company, her ungrateful child and the men that she's forced to solicit out of a quiet desperation. Siama approaches the female gaze from a different perspective, with an effect no less profound. Portrait of a Lady on Fire, for example, barely utilises male characters at all, casting aside the male characters that dominated the art world specifically in historical documentation. Although their presence is not felt, Siama makes sure that their influence is eminent, and even through the freedom exhibited through Merlon and Enel's characters, Siama emphasises their constraints, the strategic lack of agency given to women at the time, trapping them in marriage and livelihood prescribed against their own wills. She outwardly addresses this in terms of the art world, as in the denouement of the film, Merlon's character is approached by a man, He commends the canvas before him and attributes its merit to her father. She's forced to explain to him that it is in fact hers, but that due to her position as a woman, she was forced to list it under a masculine name. Siama presents men as invasive, often in a benign way, but as a force to be fiercely feared and apprehended by women, a reaction to male gaze films and how they present women as weak and exclusively sexual. Siama diverts the narrative. As Siama's body of work continues to evolve, I'm certain that she'll continue to explore these dynamics and themes, and I'm eager to see what she produces next.